Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Chantel Nib, and my mentor was Dr. Robbins Henry from the History Department, and my presentation is on the rise and fall of empires. There we go. All right, so the purpose of my research is pretty much to determine common themes of the rise, survival, and decline of empires which can fit into a global pattern and of societies which can be traced throughout history. But first, there are some key terms that we need to be able to differentiate between. The first one is nations. So nations refer to the absolute authority of the state or whatever political institution is in place to make laws and enforce them throughout their uh, territory. And indeed, of course, uh, governments and political institutions differ between nations. However, the initial rise is usually based in natural bonds, such as language, history, culture, or notions of national identity and cultural exchange. And empires are actually formed from the conglomerate of nations. So it's usually a territory of greater extent than the actual core, and they're ruled over by an emperor or another sovereign uh, government. All right, so my research question is to determine these common themes of an empire's formation, survival, and decline, which fit into the global pattern. And in order for these na uh, nations or empires to prevail or to con continue to exist, what are the events in a cycle that of the rise and decline that must be overcome? And I found this research very interesting because in a, alone in the 20th century, the collapse, there was the collapse of seven great empires and numerous empires before then had already uh, ceased to exist. So I was just looking for those common themes that can be applied to current nations, which we can use as warning signs as a catalyst for change or decline. The methodology used was a historical literature review, which pretty much what I did was examine literature based off of the Roman Republic and empire and French monarchy, revolutionary era and empire. Mostly, I chose these uh, two empires due to the fact that these empires are able to demonstrate the political, social, and economic factors that enable evolution of empires and the displacement of long-standing political institutions. Also, I chose them for analysis due to their importance as great powers of their time and their era and their enduring influence within their borders and out of their borders. All right, so what I kind of found was that an empire is formed due to the surplus income and the formation, survival, and decline of all historical societies is tied to their surplus income and resources. However, empires tend to unravel as it, it succumbs to itself. So it's brought down by its own efforts at self-expansion and pretty much ignoring political and social unrest. In his rise of the fall of great powers, uh, Paul Kennedy emphasizes productivity increase and systematic inter interventions which lead to economic growth and prosperity within a nation. However, he also pinpoints how military overstretch remains a consistent threat when uh, facing powers whose ambitions and security requirements are greater than the, the actual resource base provided in that nation. So when focusing on the Roman Empire, the Roman Republic, a little history background for you guys, um, became a republic after the overthrow of their last king, which is Tarquin. In his stead, there were actually two consuls put in place, and they were each to serve one-year terms. So the political offices were opened, and voting assemblies and councils were put in place. However, as noted in Rome and in France, when given the opportunity, political and social elites will make an attempt to seize more power. In 60 BCE, Caesar and Pompey and Crassus combined their resources and overtook Roman politics. However, after Crassus died and Pompey's defeat by Caesar in 47 BCE, Caesar assumed power, complete control, and became pretty much a dictator. So after Caesar's assassination, an attempt to restore the Republic actually led to a political vacuum. So at one point, there were six different militaries at war in Italy, or Rome, trying to take, take control and just to see who would pretty much be in charge afterwards. 
And what ended up happening was the first emperor of Rome took place in 27 BC, which was Augustus or Octavian, who is Julius Caesar's nephew. France was a little different. However, there are there is evidence of common themes. So France was united in the 13th century. And when you fast forward a little bit, there's the reign of Louis the 13th and Louis the 14th. They developed a highly centralized system, but they also developed a large national debt due to a lot of expensive military campaigns. Like Rome, in an attempt to consolidate more power and wealth, they engaged in way too many military campaigns. So as the national debt became larger and the crown continued to levy taxes on the lower classes, um, there was great social unrest. So Louis the Fort, by the time of Louis the 16th, there was a failure to solve this financial crisis, which led to social, more social unrest and in the end, the overthrow of that regime. Revolutionaries such as Robespierre were unable to solve the, fis the fiscal crisis. However, they were able to complete the work of the pre-existing order, which was to centralize more and more power with the initiation of things like the Reign of Terror, which most of us know about. And pretty much with the centralization of more power, there was a threat of civil war and foreign invasion. And that revol revolutionary government was able to purge all, its, all of its opponents but was overthrown again by the directory, which followed that Robespierre's government. However, by 1799, the directory was yet again overthrown after attempting to return to a more centralized form of government. And then that is when Napoleon Bonaparte comes in and he pretty much led a military coup, but in the end also ended up wielding dictatorial powder, powers in France and became their first consul. In, after 1804, he was the first emperor. All right. So pretty much my findings were that the failings of moron political reforms in Roman and French political institutions and elites foundered intense opposition and enabled political insurgents such as Caesar and Rob, and Rob Spear to come into power. Comparably, the assassination of Rob Spear, Rob Spear and the regicide of Louis XVI were both attempts to implement a new republic. Unfortunately, the violence and the volatility that ensues after political and social upheavals only helps to establish a more centralized system of administration. How this could be applied to the 21st century is that we can note that there's a lot of ideological changes, foreign pressures, and economic decisions that can be seen as catalysts for change and for decline. There are multiple themes and elements that can be paralleled to historical uh, social and political sy systems that can be paralleled to the 21st century. And while Mark Twain says history doesn't repeat itself, it often rhymes. So it's important to identify these common themes and see if we can draw parallels to the, uh, the climate of the 21st century and acknowledge any of these characteristics for change. <laughs>